When I was little, I didn't read or write well. Um, I was really hyper, and I had a very short attention span. They have a diagnosis for it. But, um, I was raised, I was homeschooled early on by my stepfather. Uh, he was my teacher, but about the only thing he ever really taught me was that I should rebel against all authority. Um, I eventually did end up attending public school, and almost immediately I realized that everyone there were authority figures, so I did what I was taught, and I rebelled. That didn't help me in school. Um, you couple that with my learning disability, and uh, it's pretty obvious that my introduction to school was a disaster. I did go to school, and um, I struggled through it. It's hard for a child to maintain any sort of positive self-image when they're not getting positive feedback, and for me, I wasn't getting it for my academics, and my behavior was, well, I wasn't getting it there. And I really sucked at sports, so. <laughs> the one thing I've always had going for me, though, is my art. And really early on, I used my art um, to get myself the positive feelings that I, that I needed. And my art really helped me to get through school. I remember a time I illustrated one of my classmates' uh, writings, and in return, she typed work out for me. I, I always did things like that in school. <clears throat> Um, but I eventually graduated, and almost immediately I entered the workplace. I wanted to be the adult. I wanted to be out on my own. Um, so I went and I took a job. The job I took didn't pay very well, and I, I didn't like it. Uh, in fact, after a while, I hated the monotony of, of just the work day and, and, and just the in and outs. And This was my first time out on my own, and at the time, I, my life didn't have a lot of direction or meaning, um, and it was around then that I started to use drugs fairly heavily. Um, I'd use them in high school, recreationally, but this was different. And the more that I used them, the more my life just seemed to spiral out of control. I knew I had to quit. I mean, you can't live that kind of life and be happy, and that's really all anyone wants, is to be happy. I knew if I didn't quit, I would most likely die from it. <clears throat> so one day, all of that pain, that, just all those feelings just came up and they kind of overwhelmed me. And I said, you know what, it's time, I gotta quit. And so I thought, well, you know, so many people have tried this and failed. I'm in a, pl I'm in a losing place. And so uh, I did have one thing that I had tucked away was my secret weapon, it was my mother. And so I called her. I told her I needed her help. I said, if I, if I don't do it now, I don't know if I'll ever do it. And she was great, she said, come home. I'll help you get clean. So I did, I went home and I began the long process of sobering up. Now, during that time, during the first days and weeks of it, it became obvious that I needed something to keep my hands busy. Because I mean, your mind, you're going through a lot. Uh, and my mother offered to teach me basket weaving. And, um, you know, basket weaving has been in my family for generations. But up until that point, I'd never tried it. I'd never really even seen it up close. But as soon as I did try it, I took to it. It became something that I felt I had to master. I started weaving almost addictively. <clears throat> Art has always had a really healing force in my life. And during my early days of sobriety, it really, it saved me. Um, I started to feel better. And things started to get a lot easier. And I thought, maybe I can use this experience to help other people with the same problem. So I contacted a friend who had expressed some interest in getting clean to come weave with me. I thought, hey, Maybe it'll help him the way it helped me. It didn't. <laughs> uh, I realized that art, you know, and, and basketry, it worked great for me, but it's not a cure-all, and you know, I don't know if there is one. Um, so I decided to focus all of my energies on myself and on my art. Really early on in my, in my sobriety, I started to sell my work. I mean, it's just kind of, it's part of the culture. We sell our baskets. And... I realized that, you know, all those jobs that I had had that I 
just hated. I mean, this was something I could do for a career. This is something I could make a living at. And so I set out to make my own version of that Passamaquoddy basket. I wasn't trying to take away from any of our traditional cultural designs. I just wanted to add my little touches. And so that's what I did. I created a line of basketry that's grounded in all of those traditions, but distinctly original. My works have influenced many of today's weavers. I've won numerous awards for it. I even met my wife at a basket show. <laughs> and we have two kids now. And I see myself, I mean, I'm seeing the world from a completely unique perspective, I think. You know, my experiences have shaped who I am today. And I just want to raise my children to know that they're accepted and loved and to be the father to them that I really never had. Thank you. <laughs>